Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of Bikini and the Brain. I am here twinning with Ashley. We're wearing the Bikini and the Brain shirt. We didn't plan this. That's what's no, really funny. Didn't. This is only the second time I've worn this shirt, so that's just so Same. rare. Really? Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> that goes back. I was telling the story the other day about how we started um, training, and then we didn't talk for like a year, and then we both thought of each other the same day, and we both like... Oh, there's some weird things that happen with Ashley because we connect on all these weird levels and that one still freaks me out. I'll it is freaky. It doesn't. That's the weirdest one. Um, <laughs> I was telling someone about it the other day and they were like, really? Like, why don't you talk about that? Like, we've talked about it. We just don't yeah. really. But yeah, if you, so you guys don't know, uh, we've, I've been, me and Ashley, we would, we would talk occasionally. We trained once, like once in a great moon. And, um, and the, the weird thing was I was in the office with Tori one day. I was like, I wonder what Ashley was doing what yeah, she's doing now that she had like a year off. Like I, w- I would, I would coach her if she came back, I would like to coach her because you know, she's coming back and it'd just be a fun thing to do like a comeback thing, you know? And, um, and the same day after not talking to each other for probably like, it's probably closer to like 15, 16 months at that time. Right. We didn't it, know each other that well. Yeah. It was, like, it was like, she came to Colorado once for a seminar. I yeah. went out to LA once. I, I trained with her in the LA once or twice. Um, it was something like that. And, uh, yeah, and so it was like a very casual Instagram relationship type of thing. And I'm like, oh, hey, Ashley, how are you? I just saw your post today, that type of thing. And then the same day, after months and months of not talking, she thought, oh, you know what? I, I think I want to come back, and I think I would train with Adam if I came back. And then I was thinking, you know, I wonder what Ashley, if she'd come back, I would, I would love to coach her if she came back. And then she said it out loud, and then I just decided to email her that day. And it was, it's just such a wild story. Like, mm-hmm. and then I don't know, it's just, I'm just going with it. Cause the shirts kind of remind me because <laughs> we didn't plan it. Yes. <laughs> this would be the, if I was making money on these shirts, that would be the ultimate setup, but yeah. I'm not. So <laughs> 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 anyway, what do we, what do we have today on the episode? More profound things like that. Just yes. But before we get to that, why don't you tell them where they can find these yes. shirts in case they're interested in twinning with us. They can be our triplet. Yes. Okay. So, you know, guys. <laughs> On these shirts, we have them on YouTube. Um, they are, I don't make anything off of these shirts. So any profit we make off the shirts, uh, which is like $5 a shirt, it goes towards the Miracles of Christmas, which is a, a nice guy in Texas who gives kids gives kids toys during Christmas that can't afford it. And um, I think it's such an awesome thing. So hopefully we're doing okay with it. You know, we're, we're doing okay with it. Hopefully we can get a few thousand dollars together for him and yeah. with these shirts. And they don't make that much money. There's like, you know. Yeah. four or five bucks a shirt. And when but, you say YouTube, it's on the bar underneath the video, I believe, right? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. There's some, um, there's, and all that's just donation stuff. So yeah, yeah that's fun. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. Right. It's easy, it's free, and it supports, it supports some, some kids, gives you something to say you did good and you get some merch with it. Why not? Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, getting into today's talking points here. Um, so I thought it'd be a good idea to address the ongoing question that many competitors ask themselves, especially the newcomers. Am I too extreme? Am I doing enough? Am I doing too much? Because I feel like, you know, especially if you're new to the sport, just like getting into it is like, ah, man, my... My friends and family are saying I'm doing too much, but then I saw a girl on Instagram and she's doing way more than me. So I don't know. Am I doing too much? Am I not doing enough? I'm so confused because I do think in the sport and with anything, you can overdo things. Oh yeah, it could become a maybe a little bit of a negative obsession. Which you know, at some point, if you're going to be successful and especially at the top. You're going to have to be a little bit obsessed for sure. But sometimes it does become a problem if it's too much, you know. And then on the flip side, if you're not giving enough effort, that is also a problem. Yeah. And I think that it's a really good thing to self-evaluate in a scenario this too. Because you, you have, there's a, there's a sliding scale, you know, and that's the, that's the thing. There's a very big sliding scale on this is, okay, when I was growing up and when I was coaching, I said, I want to be the best coach in the world all my goal was for like a decade. And I knew that it would cost me a lot, you know, time relationships. I mean, it cost it cost a lot to like really give it your all. But it was worth it to me because the I, I love my I love what I do, right? The same thing happens to anyone, any champion of a, a, a like a big sport, they're gonna have that championship ring while you see these guys like cry when they get this ring these like manly men they're like break down in tears and emotion it's not because they won it's because like everything just has led up to that moment 
and it's just all comes out and it's like it's it's the best thing to see in sports you know i love seeing that's a that's the one thing i love seeing in sports there was one where michael jordan um he won and he like grabs the trophy and he's like in the back he, he's like he's un, he's inconsolable like no one can really like help his dad died that year and he has the trophy and he's just like crying and he's just squeezing this trophy like like it's his first puppy you know and um it's such a beautiful thing to see, you know, but you know, so much from, since he was a kid went into that moment, you know, and then, and, and it's just like, you have to understand you, you have to, if you want to be Miss Olympia bikini and you want to, um, to get to that level, it's going to take that great sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So you have to be really, so the, the problem that I see is that some people will say they want that, but then they give actions like, Oh, I just want to be an NPC competitor. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is nothing wrong with that, but you got to be honest with yourself. So I think that's the first thing we got to figure out. Right. Yeah. How far do you really want to go? Then the next thing is how much am I willing to, to sacrifice and how much can my life afford to sacrifice that too? You know, mm-hmm. I think that's important. You know, if you're, if you're a CEO at a major company and you also have five kids and, and, um, you want to be Miss Bikini Olympia and you're working 60 hours and you have kids sports on the weekends, it's, is can your life afford to do that extra? That's going to be another thing too, right? So there's maybe, you know, I'm not going to say it can't, I'm just saying that's a scenario you you would consider. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think more, more often than not, we see a lot of people talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. You know, they say they want these things. They say to their coach, Oh my gosh, I'm so motivated. I'm ready to kill it this season. I will do whatever it takes. And maybe they have that mindset, you know, for maybe, a few weeks, but that doesn't last. The thing is, you know, I always say this, the motivation, it comes and goes. It fluctuates throughout the week, throughout the day, even by the hour, you know, that's why I always turn in the morning is because, you know, that's when my motivation is the highest. And then it kind of declines at towards the end of the day. But, um, you know, with that being said, Not everyone is motivated 365 days a year, but you got to have the willpower and the dedication that heavily outweighs motivation, right? Because willpower doesn't fluctuate throughout the day. Uh, Dedication doesn't fluctuate throughout the day, but motivation does. Motivation is very temporary. So comes and goes depending on what your day is, what your mood is like, but you need to have that willpower and dedication in order to succeed. And just so you guys know, anybody who's ever achieved anything great didn't do that by just getting by. They didn't just do the bare minimum, even if like that's what's on their plan. They don't do just the bare minimum. They go above and beyond. They do extra credit. So you need to ask yourself, um, you know, how bad do you really want it? And do you want it like, is this something that's you're, you're speaking out of because you're excited in the moment or something that's like you realize it's a long-term goal and you've been wanting this for a while, not just a, oh, I want this in the moment and not, not have your actions align with what you say you want. I think that's a, a, a really great point, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it's, it really does. I think it really comes down to evaluating your why, you know, yeah. and it's, and it's that, that motivation, but you're right. You're not going to have days where you're motivated. You're going to have days where you're just getting through it. And those are the days that really test you. You know, those are the days that are going to be the real test. Anyone could get through a prep that's like, let's say the last eight weeks. I don't know anyone who's not motivated the last eight weeks, unless they've done like 20 shows and already checked out. They're like, eh, I'm just going through this one type of thing. But you find any competitor who's done like less than five shows or anyone who's doing a pro show, uh, for the most part, doing like a pro show, the last eight weeks, like you don't have to question their intensity and their their dedication. It's not those weeks that matter, you know, those weeks, I'm, I know I'm going to get hundred percent out of 95% of the people, you know, but it's the other weeks. It's the 24 weeks out, the 36 weeks out. I'm in improvement season. I have no, I have no deadline for a show right now. What are, are you doing? Are you working just as hard during that time when you have, when you're nine months or a year away from nationals next year, um, than you are now? Cause that's what, when we talk about before we talked about day capturing and day capturing is this thing, you know, we came up with a long time ago. And basically said, are you taking full advantage of the day? And if you were to have a win or loss day versus your opponents, would you win that day? So every day you accumulate these small wins, you win for the day. You know, I'm trying to get bigger arms than, I'm trying to get bigger glutes than Ashley. (laughs) I've lost most of those days. (laughs) But today, today I'm going to train my glutes harder than Ashley trained her glutes. And today I'm going to win. And tomorrow I'm going to win. And I'm going to keep accumulating these small wins. And I worked harder than Ashley now. And a year from now, 
or for, for Ashley, probably a hundred years from now, I'll have like <laughs> big enough to beat Ashley. Right. And that's how you, that's how you pass your competition. Right. And the next thing, you know, the girl who was beating you at the last show, you're, you're stomping her now. She's not even in, she's not even realistic anymore because you captured the days you beat her on a daily basis, not on a, on a, you know, a woman, I beat her during my prep. I worked harder than her during prep. Cause you're probably not going to work harder during prep. You're going to be probably be very close you're going to probably be able to be very close because you're both going to work really, really hard as you can during those preps. But the out of preps, right? Did I beat her that day? Did I beat her the next day? And if you think of every day and you're waking up, you're like, you might not even know the girl's name. You say, that number 16 who beat me, I'm never going to let that happen again. I'm not going to let that happen again. I'll do whatever it takes today to make sure that doesn't happen. If you have that level of intensity because your why is bigger than your how, mm -hmm. then that's when you're going to be successful in the sport. Because I promise you, a lot of people's how's are, are, are smaller than their wise out there and uh, they're going to do it. You know, you, you'd see these bodybuilders who are crushing it to this point. You're like, how do you get there? Like, how do you get to that physical level of being able to endure that much pain for what? Right. And like the common sense person will stand back and be like, dude, like if we're not in this, if you're not in the sport and you're looking at our sport, so hold on a second, you're not eating, <laughs> you're irritable, Right. You're doing, waking up, doing cardio, you're working hard, and then you're in the gym and you're like punishing yourself on a daily basis so you can wear a sparkly bikini and be judged by everyone <laughs> in basically a shine, in a, in a sparkly thong for what again, right? And so you're like, when you think about it from the outside, it is crazy, right? It's, you look at that on paper, it is pretty crazy. But the, the passion that you have to have to do it, like you can't willpower your way through it. You need to have passion for it Absolutely. and you have to have a really strong why. And you have to remind yourself of that why, because what we do is crazy. You know, it's mm -hmm. absolutely crazy. Normal people wouldn't do that from the outside. So you have to, you know, you're going to have to find those, find your why and think about it every day. Write it down on paper, put it on your wall, put it on your door when you walk up, put it on your fridge, you know, whatever the case is, because that why needs to stay with you 100% of the time. And if, if you want to go far, you know, if you just want to do transform, there's nothing wrong with that. But you need to admit that to yourself and say, I just want to do transform. I'm, I admit that's right now. I'm just a health and fitness guy. You know, that's what I am. And I think it's great. I love it. You know, but, um, you know, I do look at those itches when I go to shows sometimes like, man, I do want to do it. You know, I want to I wish I had it right now, you know, <laughs> so but I, I'm realistic, you know, with it. So um, I think that's an important thing. And so if you want to go pro, you know, ask yourself, why? What is it going to do for you? Why do you want to accomplish this goal? Don't just think, oh, I just want to be pro. You have to ask yourself why. And I think that's an important conversation too. And if you, if it's a, a good, valid reason that's going to improve your life, which it will for a majority of people who do go pro, um, you just have to hang on to that and really think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think a lot of times people will ask, well, what do I do on the days that I'm like not motivated, you know, and I'm just like, I hit a wall and I'm just not into it, you know? It's, it's a common thing to have those fluctuations like of motivation, like I explained. And just know that the reason why you're thinking this way is it's a mood, okay? You maybe had a bad day, something external uh, went on maybe at work that's kind of affecting your workout. Maybe you even didn't sleep as well. Just know that if you have like an off day, like a day you just feel like meh, just know it's a mood. It's a day and tomorrow's going to be better. You got to push through now, even if you don't enjoy it, push through and just know that, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to get this situated. I'm going to get my mind right by tomorrow. I'm going to get some good sleep, be in a better mood, and I'm going to have a much better training day, but not every day is going to be like a win. You know, sometimes you're just going to be like, well, you know, I didn't sleep well. I, I'm in a bad mood. Something else happened at work. I'm crunched for time. So not every day is going to be perfect. Not every day is going to be ideal, but with that day, with that 24 hours that you're given, you need to make the most of it and just push through. And I do think that, you know, especially on the days that we're dragging a lot, it's like the hardest part about the workout is it's just going to the gym itself, honestly. Yeah. It's like sometimes just the dread of it and just kind of the procrastination of it all, just like you're procrastinating, you're dreading the workout, you're just not in the mood, you feel tired, you're irritated, whatever. But then once you're there, you put on your music, you're in the zone. You're like, you know what? That's not so bad. That is not so bad. Um, I can do this. And 
it's kind of like you just have to go for it. Stop overthinking it. Stop procrastinating. Stop dreading. Just go to the gym. And, you know, the same thing applies for the diet as well. When you have those days where you're just like, I don't even care about my diet, you need to stop before you indulge in something that you shouldn't be. Just stop and be like, is this what I'm about to eat? Is this going to make me feel good uh, by tomorrow? Or am I just looking for that five minutes of satisfaction, right? Because more likely than not, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, this tastes good for the five minutes I'm eating it. And then by tomorrow, you feel guilty and you're like, oh my God, why did I just ruin my diet? I was doing really well and then I just had this cheesecake. Now that set me back. So, you know, you gotta you gotta kind of like pause and ask yourself because I think sometimes we just, we don't really pause and just be like, why do I want to eat this? Is this going to help me? Why don't I want to work out? Should I, should I stay home? Like you need to like have that little discussion inside your head and be like, what is going to benefit me in the long run? Because most of the time when you're not motivated, you're thinking of the now, like now I want to eat this because it's going to taste good. Or now I don't want to work out because I'm just want to relax at home and just watch TV, but that's not going to benefit you in the long run. So anytime you're not feeling motivated, you need to take a step back and expand out and ask yourself, what is the ultimate goal? What is the bigger picture? Do not let my bad mood determine my ultimate goal. Because if you allow your bad mood to uh, keep taking a toll and that becomes a habit, you're not going to reach your goals. So you just got to push through on some days, you know. Yeah. And you know what? That's funny. That reminds me of another sports uh, analogy that uh, Wayne Gretzky had, actually. And it was told to me when I was a young hockey player um, because I had this bad habit when I was a young hockey player. And a lot of young hockey players have this bad habit that are good stick handlers. So when I was younger, I was more of a st- stick handler than like a defense. So I'd try to get inside and, and shoot goals and whatnot. And um, at the lower level, I would do really well. I could, I could stick handle, I could get inside and get good shots. But at the higher levels, when we got to the world level, I wasn't getting inside and I wasn't taking any shots, right? Because I wasn't getting inside. And so um, my coach, he said, hey, you know, uh, Wayne Gretzky. And I was like, yeah, he's like, you ever heard the saying that he said, 100% of the shots you don't take, don't score? And uh, mm-hmm. I was like, no, but I like that saying a lot, right? But it's funny because it's, it's, a, it's, a it's applicable to what we do, right? 100% of the workouts you don't do don't help you improve, right? right. Even if it's a crappy workout. Even mm-hmm. if it's a crappy off-angle shot, you know, offline, and it's, there's no angle, and you know it's not going to score, you still could create a rebound, and you can get another goal. And that was the whole purpose of that saying, right? It's just like, anytime you get a vision on the goalie, like, just take a shot, right? Anytime. Just create something, you know? And with working out, same thing. There's so many reasons why we can just not work out. Yeah. You know, I'm in my office sometimes, you've seen it, like, 9 o'clock at night, and I'm like, dang it, it's 9 o'clock, I should, I should still go to the gym, right? It, because no one's ever left the gym and said, oh, man, I really wish I didn't do that today. You Unless know? they injure themselves, but yeah, that's the <laughs> yeah, exception. There is that. <laughs> there is that. I'm working at a gym, I've seen a few of them. I've, I've seen some bad ones. <laughs> but, you know, so that's the that's the thing is, you know, just get to the gym. You know, just get to the gym. You're going to feel the motivation after you do the first few sets. I'd say, I would say 90% of the time that I, maybe like, let's say 85% of the time that I go to the gym where I don't want to go to the gym that day and I'm like trying to, I'm just kind of like forcing myself through after like two to three sets, I'm like, okay, I'm here. You know, yeah. I've got my music on loud and I'm like, okay, I'm feeling it now. Like it mm-hmm. took me a couple sets and then I'm like, okay, I'm good. You know, yeah. so, um, you know, find what works for you with that stuff because you're going to run into more, you're going to run into a lot of days where you're not motivated. It's, it's going to be a good percentage of the time, the longer you do it, especially. So I have a, like for me, I have this motivational, um, book on YouTube, what's it called? A book, uh, album uh, on YouTube where I've got all these like bodybuilding videos with good music or motivational like quotes and whatnot and, and, and speeches. And I'll, li- I'll just listen to that instead of music during my workouts and like a few sets in, I'm, I'm good to go. So find what works for you. Maybe you have that go-to partner in your, your, your area. I think that's always important too. You have Sam, you train with, you know, you do the booty camp with, with Kimber or whoever's on. Oh, you did it with Denitra this, this, uh, mm-hmm. this Saturday. And, um, you know, you, you have like partners and stuff you could do it with. So like you found your way to stay motivated on a consistent basis and get yeah. those extra efforts in. Um, and so if, if that's something you guys need, you know, find your motivational things, find your, that, that, um, playlist that just hits you a certain way, you know, find that those, save those motivational videos on YouTube. Find a workout partner at your gym that's doing the same thing that you are that you can call on once a week, twice a week or whatever if you're both having a bad day and like have that agreed upon thing. Hey, I'm having a, 
I'm having one of these days where I don't really want to work out. Can you, can we push it? Can you push me today? Can we push each other today? You know, set those things up to make sure you have that success in life. Because remember, you got to capture that day. Do what it takes to beat that girl who beat you last time and get just a little bit ahead. And you got to, you're beating, you got to think of it that way too. You're in competition. This is a competition. So you're in competition with people. Did you do enough to beat your closest adversary that day? Right. Did you do enough? And so if you think of it like that as versus like, oh, just a workout, you think of it as more of a sports way. And that's how I always thought about it too. Like I always thought, okay, I'm going to capture the guy who thinks he's working harder than me today is not going to happen. Mm-hmm. That guy, he's going to, he's, he doesn't realize it, but I'm beating him today. Yeah. You know? And so if you start thinking about it that way, I think it's going to be a little bit easier too, because it is a competition. We don't have this um, finite deadline, right. Of like a, a race like you would do before where you could see those instant results, right? So that's the hard part about this race. But it is a daily race, you know? It is a daily a daily race that, uh, like an Ashley Hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so, right. It is a daily race. I never is. looked at it like that, but I like that analogy. It definitely is. You know, you're, it's a competition. People very forget. It's a slow race, but it's, it's a, a race. It's a very slow race. Yeah, it's a, it is. When you're in competition, you're going against <laughs> someone. That means you are going against them that day too. Even though you don't see them on stage that day, you're still going against them. Did you do enough to beat them to better their day today? You know, and that's how you're going to win. If, if you think that, if you think that you're going to beat them the next time you face that person when you didn't better 200 of the days of the year, but you're like, oh, but I'll kill my last 14 weeks. Like, cool. Good luck, guy. I've been training 365, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, that's just how, that's not how it works. This is not how any sport works. I don't know why anyone would think it would be, that would work in ours, you know, right. which requires pretty much perfection, you know, so. Absolutely. And I think there's no shame in like, just like you said, like having like a workout partner to help motivate you have like the accountability factor, because I feel like there, you know, sometimes with this, it's like, I, I don't know how many times that I've trained with Sam. And I, I even said to her, I'm like, I'm really happy. I'm training with you today because honestly, I feel like such crap today that I probably just would have skipped it. So having accountability is is good. And there's no shame in that, whether that be having a workout partner that or a trainer that you see every every week at this time on this day, or even signing up for a workout class like I do Orange Theory sometimes, whether that be like one of those spin classes or signing up for anything. Once you, because they're, you know, for most part people, it's like once you commit to something, you don't want to let anybody down, you know? So I think that's a really helpful thing. But also to our people that aren't as lucky as us, because we're so lucky, we're very we're very much around fitness people yeah. all the time. You know, we are living the fitness stream right now. Like we go into work and there's fitness people, people in the industry. And, you know, for me too, like, it's like such a cool thing to have like other competitors in the city and that come to our seminars and, and our glute camps. And, you know, I work at a facility that customizes plans and stuff for, for competitors, you know? So I'm very much involved with the sport and I do all these seminars and I compete a lot, but there are, you know, there are girls that aren't as lucky and maybe they're just living in the middle of nowhere or in a different country that bodybuilding isn't a thing, Yeah, you know? And I feel for those girls and it must be hard to be it must be extra hard to be motivated knowing that you're like the only one and there's no one around to motivate and you push you. Cause even when I go to one of our, our seminars, I get motivated from that. Or I go to a show in Vegas here, even if I'm, or a competition show, I should say, um, even if I'm not competing there, like seeing the amateurs compete, it's like motivating for me. I'm like, Oh, I love, I love this feeling. You know, I, I can't wait till I get to go up on stage. So we're very lucky for that. And, you know, for the girls that aren't really around that kind of um, atmosphere, I would suggest like do as best as you can to involve yourself with the community, whether that be like social media or or even like if there's like a show somewhere that takes place in your state, try to make try to make an effort to go out and see it and just, you know, involve yourself and immerse yourself in the culture. Um, and I think what one thing that really helped me when I was in Ohio, you know, I lived in Akron, Ohio for the most of my life. And before I was a competitor and before I did this for a living, you know, I competed in Ohio and I trained in Ohio. It wasn't as motivating as Vegas, you know? Um, but what I would do is every single night I would watch the Arnold amateur, uh, on YouTube, like the, the classes and, and just seeing how that was working and, and 
I just got like the goosebumps every time I watched it too. And then they would call the winners and the overall winner. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I want that to be me someday. And I got motivation just from watching it. And I had the same one pulled up on my computer that I would watch every I single night. Yeah. So cool. Every single night. And I was like, I cannot wait till it's my turn. So that's you know. so cool. Yeah. I didn't know this, Ashley. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. so cool. Yeah. It's like, I, it w- I would just like, watched the crap out of it too it was when ingrid romero won i think the year before i'd always put that on replay and i saw the one from the year before that was noemi ola that won the overall amateur arnold and i would just watch it over and over and over and i never got bored it was just super motivating for me that's so cool yeah. that's a cool story this is a cool story i can't even imagine i i just can't imagine watching the same competition over and over and again. I got and then, goosebumps every time too. And then and then winning it. Like that's crazy, yeah. you know. That's like a crazy thing. And then and then winning the actual pro division later. Like that's just a crazy thing to think about. I know. I'm like, like Cinderella right now. It's pretty I can't ima- I can I can only imagine it cuz like I you know like growing up playing hockey or whatever like watching Stanley Cup. Like and then one day you win it. Like I can't I don't know. You know I, I never had that feeling. So it's like Pretty, pretty crazy to, pretty crazy to, to, to see that someone actually watch it and then do it. You know, it's cool to see. Mm -hmm. That's a cool thing. Anyway, so I'm sorry. I was just like caught off on that moment. That was just, this is a cool thing to see and appreciate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love sports for those reasons. You know, you see people accomplish their goals, a little girl watching the Arnold and she goes and wins the Arnold and then she wins the Arnold pro and then she wins the Olympic. Like that's a cool, it's just a cool thing. Sports are a beautiful thing, you know, they bring out the best in everyone. Um, so now with this podcast, we talked about, you know, are we doing, be, are we being obsessed? What's a healthy level of obsession, mm-hmm. whatnot? So I think what, that's the one thing that I always, I always want to come off the right way too, because I still do think that there is time for balance and you can still beat everyone on the day. You know, I think that that's important too, to, to, to not, because you have to be, have this balance of working crazy hard and being perfect every day, but then also being um, realistic to the point, can are you the person that can carry on like that forever, right? And some people, I'll see some people where they go, the, I think it's great. I appreciate the effort when someone goes 100% all the time, always. But I also, I like to look at their their personal life too. And I'm like, okay, are you like completely ostracizing yourself from any other part of the world um, or to the point where you're not, you don't have any relationships or anything like that. Like you do a good balance of that and you have a good support system here and Hugo's awesome guy. And like, you just, you've had, you got a very good system for you, but some people I see, they're just like isolated for years. And I'm like, well, maybe we can loosen up a little, the reins a little bit and you could still be perfect. And maybe you do, you know, a macro meal once a day or a macro meal once a week or a free meal once a week where you can get out there and, and go to a dinner with your boyfriend or, you know, if you're having those continuous fights of, oh, we never do it, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, So I do think that there's a good balance. I don't want to come off the wrong way. I think that there's a good healthy level of it. Um, I think that there's a necessity for you to be absolutely intense if you want the real intense goals, but you also have to figure out, okay, what's, how long can I last like this? And do I need to be a little bit, a little bit looser here and there? And I'm not saying go crazy and just don't track calories for a month and gain 20 pounds. That's, that is also not balanced. And we talked about that before too. Balance isn't eating tilapia and asparagus only and doing two hours of cardio and sitting in a room and, and ostracizing yourself from your family, your friends, everything until the competition's over. And balance is also not right when you get done with a show, just shoving your face full of food and saying, oh, it's because I needed balance and using that as an excuse and gaining 20 pounds the first month after competing. That is also not balanced. So mm-hmm. there's, there's a, there's a, the middle of that is, well, probably farther towards the tilapia side <laughs> is, is more so the balance part because you're still bodybuilding trying to compete. So um, so that would be my take on it is is be match your strictness with your goals, but also make sure you could, you're could you not being so crazy that you can't sustain it for, for a couple of years because this is not a 16-week sport. This is a year sport. You know, a career could be decades long. So just think about that too. That's mm-hmm. a thing I think about. So yeah. um, if you're a transformation person though, I think, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you being kind of half halfway during the off season, still working out really hard, maybe just tracking your macros in the off season, having a free meal once in a while, and then only dial, dialing it in super hard during the 16 weeks. Just don't be that person and say you want to be Miss Olympia, you know, because you're just pretty much basing your entire like luck off of genetics at that point. And most, most, even, even the girls with the best genetics in the world are still working harder than you. So it's just unlikely you're going to ever catch up, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. So whenever, you know, I, I kind of thought of, 
I didn't really even go to in my mind the whole aspect of like, oh, your social life, family, friends kind of extreme. Um, but when I when I initially was thinking about it, I thought like more on the physical side itself of like, um, are you doing too much, right? So for example, you've said to me before, Ashley, you're the hardest worker. And I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. And here's why. I don't think you should be the hardest worker necessarily all the time. It's about working smarter, not harder. Because, let me explain. I am not doing two hours of cardio a day. You could argue that somebody that does two hours of cardio a day is working harder than me, right? Maybe the one that's doing uh, two-a-day workouts with that two hours of cardio and on 800 calories. I mean, technically, yeah, they're they're working harder than me. Um, No doubt about it, because I'm not doing that. However, are they, are they smarter for doing that? And I would say no. And maybe they put themselves in that position because they were just like we go back to often the ones that are like all or nothing when it comes to the off season, either they're a hundred percent on in the in season and the off season, they're just letting everything go. It doesn't matter. Um, and, and kind of set themselves up for that. But maybe this is also the person that signed up for a show whenever they weren't ready to and is trying to force results quickly rather than taking the long, slow route, right? So in this sport and in any sport, you can burn yourself out quickly because there's only so long you can do two hours of cardio a day, two workouts a day, eating 800 calories, eating tilapia and asparagus. Like that's, and I've seen it happen. People do it. Uh, for a few months. I don't see anybody doing that over the span of years though. They're the ones that they give this burst and then they burn out, you know? And again, I would say, yes, they're definitely working harder, but not smarter. So it's not necessarily a benefit to do that. It's really hard on your body and you can only do that for so long and you're going to get sick of it. You know, I, I think like, a lot of times too, we see girls that's like, yeah, I want to compete so much this year. I want to compete in like 15 shows this year. And then they compete in two because they get over it. It's like usually a little too ambitious when it comes to what they think they're capable of or how long they think they can keep that motivation going. Because, you know, at some point, either the diet or the cardio, you're going to get sick of it. And you're just like, I'm done with this. I just need a break. Um, and then same thing with competing too. It's like, yeah, it's fun until they're not doing as well as they wish they would have or not, not placing well, then it becomes less fun. So a lot of people have these big, uh, ambitious goals and they go so hard and they, they give like 110% and just burn themselves out and just run themselves to the ground. And it's like, yeah, they, they definitely worked they're the hardest worker for that that four months, but they can't sustain that long term. Yeah, I find that the the harder the diet, the the lower the likelihood they're going to be sticking around. Like you said, yeah, I see that the most people who leave the industry are the ones that are doing it, doing the harder diets, the two hours of cardio type of thing. You'll see, and you just see it happen a lot of times too. I see it. It's what's What's really sad, and this is not a shot at any coaches or anything like that, but I do see where there's coaches who will do that as like their go-to all the time for their athletes, like the two hours of cardio, the tilapia diets, the, the um, you know, the asparagus, whatever. Um, I see them constantly losing clients all the time too. They they're never get like to the point where they're really successful because they're always in client acquisition stage too. And I'm like, just, I'm like, not even as like a business reason though, but just think about your client. Like, why are they all leaving you all the time? <laughs> like, why can't you retain any of them? You know, well, it's because you're burning them all out, you know? And if you're in one, that's a dumb idea. But the only reason I'm saying this as like a, the business side of it is because I hope coaches stop doing that. Maybe that give, maybe that'll give a motivation to keep clients, which will in turn give them a better practice and which will in turn keep us from burning competitors out as an industry, right? Um, but yeah, that's something that I run into all the time. They look good. You'll see the before, you'll see their their show picture. You'll be like, oh, their show picture, she did good. She won her competition. And you like, she just disappeared. Whatever happened to her? And you reach out to her. She's like, oh yeah, I, I just couldn't do that diet anymore. And I'm like, damn, you had really great genetics. Like, why did you have to do that? And then you also, the other thing I find is when people diet that hard, they have that, they have that, uh, like we've talked about it before, that kind of, socially awarded 
suffering effort, yeah. like a award, right? It's like, oh, I suffered so much. I should be awarded and this is my suffering and you guys should, I'm going to post it on social media so you can show you how hard I'm working based on how hard I'm suffering. But what we won't, we're not going to talk about is how the reason I got here. <laughs> we're not going to talk about me gaining 30 pounds in the off season, which is the reason I'm here. Right. And then what we're also not going to talk about, we're also not going to talk about what my diet's going to be like as soon as I get some freedom from this diet again, and I'm going to do it again and I'm going to do it again and again, and repeat it over and over. And I'm going to then one day quit and then blame the industry that the industry ruined it. Me not, my own lack of responsibility in the off season, right? And so the the harder the diet, and I always say, if you can't sustain the, the, the diet and effort, then you're not going to sustain the results, right? There's a, there's a correlation of that. So like with your diet and your cardio, it's not that much different than when you're in your off season. You know, that's the, that's the thing. And, it's, and that's what I always tell people. They're like, well, how much time should I commit? And how much is it? And I'm like, it shouldn't be that much different than what you're doing now. Like if, you're, if you're already a fitness person, you know, one, if you're already, even if you're considering doing a competition, you shouldn't have to lose more than 20 pounds. If you're already that fit and you're doing bikini and you weigh, you know, well, let's say 120 on stage, like it's pretty realistic for you to be 20 pounds over stage weight. And you're like, now you're thinking about doing a competition, right? Like you shouldn't have it's a transformation every single time you get ready for a show. So if you're already fit and you only need to lose, you know, 15, 20 pounds to get on stage and you're already doing 20 minutes of cardio four days a week and eating, let's say 2000 calories, is it really that big of a difference to go to 40 minutes of cardio and 1500 calories? Like it's not, people are like, oh, it's going to be such a different, I just can't, I'm like, hold on. You just need to lose a little bit of fat. That's all prep is, is you're just losing a little bit of fat. That's it. There's no difference of losing fat as a transformation client as there is as a prep client. Besides at the end, it might get a little bit harder to get that extra fat out. It's a little harder at the end. But other than that, fat is fat. You're just, you know, using energy. <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. really the difference. So you're going to be using a little bit more energy than you're using before. It doesn't require you changing your entire life to go through a, a full prep. If you're already fitness focused, it's the people who weren't, who are like lying to themselves saying they're fitness focused when they're really, you know, up 30, 40 pounds in the off season. And then now they're like, oh, now I'm suffering and prep is so hard. And you guys should like, like my post because I'm showing you how hard it is and how hard I'm working. And then as soon as I'm done with this, this was so hard. I'm just going to blow up because I can't, I, I can't even, I have zero balance in my diet. Right. So that's, I think that we could, yeah, there's a lot of arguments for working, you working harder, right? <clears throat> you could look at it as, okay, she works harder on, you could look at it as you work harder on your diet for sustained periods, right? Oh yeah. yeah. More of like over a long period of time. Over a long sure. period for sure. Yeah. That's, that's a good, that's one of the things I love about you in the sport and representing the sport and shedding light on the sport. And I do think it's changing the sport for the better too. That's the, that's the fun thing. I think when, one day when we walk away from all this, right, years and years from now, we can look back and be like, remember before we, st when we started doing all these shows, everyone was giving a shit. Everyone was saying, you can't do that healthy. You can't do that. Like she's going to burn herself out. She's going to get sick. She's going to do this. She's going to do that. She's going to get injured. Like all these things. Right. And then those voices like, where are you guys at now? <laughs> right? And you see people copying what you're doing now, which they were not doing before. They were, they're doing more shows, which I think is awesome. I, I'm all for it. Especially the, like the Olympia gatekeepers, you guys keep it down to, keep it down to 25. Keep, that, <laughs> keep those gates, keep those we're, gates. We're going to need some help. You know, I'm all for it. I'm all about the Olympia gatekeepers. So, you know, we don't need 57 girls on the Olympia stage. So, um, it's, it's really cool, but it's changing things. You know, you see it used to be, you know, for the people who were bulking, they were doing one show a year. And now you see top pros are doing multiple shows a year. They're saying like in a year, they're saying five times qualified for the Olympia, three times qualified. Like it's kind of a cool thing mm -hmm. when it used to be like five times nas uh, nationally qualified, like an in Instagram. Now it's like five yeah. times like Olympia qualified or whatever. So it's like, it's a cool, it's a cool thing to see. Um, but I think what's really the, the, the thing that you're doing, you know, with, with doing competing a lot is you're showing that you can sustain it, that you can still make improvements while doing it this way. Um, and this is something you're going to probably, you know, and this is like how I can like, it's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of deep here. Okay. okay. A little bit deep and you're going to be like, Adam, no, it's not uh, like that, but it's, I just know how you are. Okay. But Okay. So in my life, I felt like I've been, I've personally been put on earth, um, you know, by God to change as much of the world as I can through fitness, right? It's not going to be a big part, but it's going to be, I'm going to have my impact, right? And along with that, I'm going to teach people how to eat good, how to get lean. And it's going to have an impact on generations to come because these parents are going to learn. They're going to teach their kids. And I'm going to add lives, add years to those parents' lives and add quality years to those lives as well. That's the important, that's my, that's my gift to the world. And I'm going to honor it because I was, I was, I was chosen for that. 
Um, so that is going to have X amount of years added to people's lives on this earth. So maybe, maybe over the course of my life, I'm going to add a, a couple thousand years of, of living and quality living to those people, right? Mm-hmm. You're doing the same thing, even though you're doing it through competing and you're doing it in a way because now you're showing girls, Hey, you shouldn't be blowing up after a show, gaining weight, a significant amount of weight after a show up and down, up and down, up and down is extremely hard on the heart. It's going to cause, you know, later on in life, you're going to have heart disease. You're going to have lower lifespans because of people doing this stuff. And you are doing this, the same thing, adding quality years to people's lives by showing this. And people are saying, hey, I can do this too. If she's doing it, why can't I do it? She's just a regular person. And so I think that that is something you're adding. And I don't think you see that yet, but it is something that you're adding to the world. And, and I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing because it has changed. It has changed the industry. And you, we can't, I know you don't like to be that. I know you don't want to be like, oh yeah, I changed that. But I could see it and I could see it like outside. Like, yeah, you had a huge impact on how people are taking their off seasons more seriously now than they were before. Cause you've shown, Hey, I can still compete at the very highest level. Number one, American two years in a row and we're three in the world. Um, I could still make improvements while being good all year, while staying lean all year, while competing all year and enjoying this and loving it for a long period of time. It doesn't have to be miserable. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's my, I guess that's my thing. Thank you. Yeah. I always say like, if I had like one message to give is like, you know, prep doesn't have to be as miserable as people make it out. Is it tough? Yeah, of course. Cause if it was easy, everyone would do it. And what's, you know, what's the fun in that? But it's, um, you know, as long as you do it the right way and you're smart about it, it does not have to be miserable. Everyone makes it a lot harder on themselves and they make it a lot harder than it actually has to be. And because of their off season for the most part, because they take that time as a free for all, you know, and I didn't always think that way too. Cause I was, you know, you know, it was like 10 years ago. Yeah. It's like that you thought you had to bulk. Well, I don't know about how you thought, but no, as a bikini competitor, I thought like I had to bulk. I was like, man, I got to put on fat. Like I don't want to eat, but shoot, I gotta, I gotta get bigger. Cause this is my off season. I got to grow some muscles. And it turns out that's not the way to do it. It's not, it's, it's kind of productive and it just makes it a lot harder on yourself. So I think everyone's kind of gotten past that. Although every once in a while we will see the, the usual bragging post about how much weight they gained in the off season. And we're just like, yeah, that's not muscle. (laughs) That's that's not muscle. Um, but you know, so slowly but surely, I think we're all as a society getting over that, that myth of you need to put on this amount of fat to, to put on muscle because as you always say not a pound of muscle was gained from a pound of fat it's just not how it translates you know so i think that's a super important message and everyone needs to be reminded of it forever once in a while because i think sometimes too is like you know when you're off season you get a little like eh, maybe a little lazy and you just don't want to check in as much you don't want to weigh yourself and you're just like yeah you know whatever but it's important to keep things uh, on track and and I always say you don't have to stay as lean as I do in the off season I'm an anomaly I'm not saying that's the way to do it but you definitely don't need to to go so far up from your stage weight you know I think a lot of people would be very surprised if they followed me around on my everyday like contest prep you know there are ones that are tougher than others like the Olympian the Arnold always the toughest preps and I think a lot of that is mental and I just make it a lot harder on myself mentally because I'm so stressed but I think people would be surprised how like chill I am you know as I prep for shows it's like what you're eating that or you're I I was picturing you doing a whole bunch of cardio and it's like I don't even start cardio till like I'm a month out from a show you know what I mean so it's like I think people would be very surprised like how chill like my preps are because you know I I earned that from having yeah. such a, a good off season. It's the reward. Yeah. I think if people saw the reward of how hard you have to work to get lean when you stay, when you're staying lean, then they would probably, a lot more people would do it, but you have to experience it. You know, Yeah. when, when you're, if you're ever in a prep and you're like, Oh, this is prep. I feel like I'm just kind of <laughs> health and fitnessing right now. Mm-hmm. That's when you're like, okay, I had a really good off season then because this is, this is cake. I could do this all year. And so, um, so yeah. And what I want, one thing I wanted to cover um, while we're here is like, where, what are the signs of you working too hard? Cause we went into that a little bit of like the working too hard. And I just did a, actually, I just did a check in today, um, with a client and she had, it was kind of, it was, you know, we had her on a six day split and she's a hard worker. And, the, and there's a the thing the the intensity, when we talk about working too hard, 
there's always going to be this thing in bodybuilding, which is intensity versus volume, you know? And if you go super high volume, you're not going to be able to go super high intensity. You will eventually like fry your nervous system. But, you know, I, I hope that everyone goes hard and then I can decrease their total volume. You just never know with how they're, how, how hard they're working on a daily basis. Your coach isn't there every single day, every single rep. So you have to go off of the data that you're accumulating. But what's cool is, um, you know, her weight was going up. She was feeling tired, all these things. And I was like, you know what, let's just try a three day deload, just the three days. And her weight went down four pounds this week, but she's only been doing this hard workout for like four weeks. So I was like, okay, this is a, she's on a six day split for like four weeks. She went down four pounds with a, with a three day deload. Like that's, that's kind of crazy that that much would build up over that period of time, but she's working really hard. I said, you know what, we're going to switch now to a five day workout because I know you're training really intensely in the gym and you're going to use those two days for recovering. And so, you know, you could look at those signs that are there. Are you, and, and that's a really good tell of it, of how often you're needing a deload. How, how your body's responding when you do a deload. Are you losing like a bunch of weight? Are you feeling awesome and refreshed just after a few days? Like that tells us a lot of different things. Like you're gonna, re- you are gonna recover pretty quickly, um, but how frequently you should do your deload. Maybe you should be doing a two days on, one day off thing. You know, you gotta listen to those signs of your body. Do your joints hurt? Is your motivation down? You know, find what works for you. You could look at like the Mike Menser workout, workout, which I would say 99 percent of people can't do they couldn't execute because it's so hard but it's tiny volume you know it's a tiny amount of volume but it's so intense right Uh, so you have to kind of weigh those things out too and find what's going to work best for you both mentally physically get that data accumulate that data and see what works for you Um, I have some people that are on a two days on one day off I have some people that are on six days I like six days for a lot of people because I you know what, a lot of the stuff that we do with bodybuilding is squeezing the muscle and, and we're not going like crazy, crazy hard. But if you're going crazy, crazy hard and you're failing and drop sets and all these things, like, yeah, you're probably going to have to go down a little bit. So weigh those two things out over the course of, you know, a, f- a few months, a month, and just start accumulating that data. And then you can kind of figure out, okay, what's too intense for me? Because it's all relative to the person, relative right. to how long you've been doing it. You know, if you just started working out, it's a lot different than then Ashley, you know, we could push Ashley like crazy for a long time and her body's just used to recovering because her base was really strong because she grew from sports, which again, were way harder than bodybuilding. So because she's training from that point, um, you know, she's not like, she's training from intensity. It's it's a different scenario. We're, it's, her workouts now are probably lower intensity than her old training was running in terms of Yes. stress on the nervous system. You absolutely. Know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So the base was there, right? So mm-hmm. it's a different, it's a different scenario. So you have to be honest with yourself and look at that. What's going to be the right intensity for you. What's too much for you is all, is all, you know, relative. So, mm-hmm. um, so I just wanted to go into that real quick too on this. So. Yeah. I think overtraining though is a lot more rare than people like it's to crazy. make it. I think a lot of people will use that Oh, like a <laughs> over overworked kind of excuse <laughs> just so they don't have to do that extra amount of cardio or whatever. So, you know, overtraining is, isn't necessarily defined by a certain amount of days or time spent in the gym. It's all relative, like you said, and there are some signs of being, uh, you know, in that state, but it's not as rare as I think people would like to make it. People were like, oh my gosh, you don't think that after like three days I would have to take a day off? Like, you know, it's like, well, I mean, I guess it depends on you as a person and what your workouts are like. But for the most part, assuming you're doing a typical bodybuilder workout, probably you don't need to take a, a day off every three days or anything. Um, but again, it's it's all relative. And I, I just, as long as you know you're challenging yourself and you're being honest with how you're feeling too, because of course you're going to feel discomfort and of course you're going to feel sore, especially when you're first getting into it, but it's not necessarily the sole indicator if you're, you know, overtraining. Overtraining is overused. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's yes. no, there is no bodybuilding in terms of what the body is capable of and what we do to the body these days, the ability, like just the odds of overtraining are so low. I mean, it's almost non-existent for almost everyone. It's, it's so low because you got to, the, the problem is, is we think of things as of now, you know, and in terms of overtraining, you're like, this is a lot for me now. Right. But what we're actually think about what we're designed to do, be hunters and gatherers and chase a lion for seven days before we can catch it and eat it and drag it back home a hundred miles away. Like that's the stuff we were doing like less than, you know, 150 years ago as humans, right. We're like, 
we're like three people from there, <laughs> you know, like everyone has kids like 40 ish. So we're like four people from there, five people from there. Right. Like that's not that much evolution where we're just designed to sit in chairs, look at our phones, work out for one hour a day and then be overtrained. I mean, that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's so ridiculous. I lift a moderate amount of weight for repetitions, not even for like one rep, right? For repetitions, I'm lifting weight for an hour in the gym, which is really like 25 minutes of actual lifting. When I used to chase bears <laughs> and save her two tigers for food, and my wife, who didn't hunt, would just be bending over, picking up berries and hiking up hills to find bananas and things like that. That was like what our roles were back then. And you telling me that you working out for 25 minutes, lifting moderate loads, is, gonna, is you're overtrained after si- doing it five, and six minutes. And you drove to the gym. And you drove <laughs> to the gym. Yeah. Come on, guys. That's not, that's not, we're, we're, we're a lot more capable than, than right. that. Right. And yeah. you know what? Somebody might say this too. They might be, you might be like, oh yeah, well my, my, I trained my upper body so much. Like my shoulders are so, so I can barely even lift my arms. And then I, I might say something like, well, what are those things you're standing on? <laughs> are those legs? Oh, you didn't train those yet? Well, train your legs then, <laughs> you know, like, you can, you, you know, just because one part of your body is sore and, and tight doesn't mean the uh, other one's unusable, like, yeah. you know? That's when I know I get my troopers, you know, I, I'll yeah. find out like an injury will tell me who my real troopers are, you know, because the thought of not working out never crosses their mind. Like I've had people with like a broken arm and then they'll like email me like frantically like, okay, so I broke my arm. Um, it was usually not broken, but like I hurt their shoulder or something. It's like more common. I hurt my shoulder and I can't lift for the doctor said for like six to eight weeks. But what I'm thinking is I can just really focus on the legs. Can you create a leg workout so I can like really focus on? And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's my, that's my guy right there. <laughs> like that. I have, I have, um, some awesome women who've had like injury here and there or play a sport or something like that. And then we just do five days a week of legs. We're like, we're just going to crush your legs. We're going to get your legs to where they need to be during this next like 12 weeks that you're down. And then we'll back off the legs at week 13 and really start doing the upper body and focus on the upper body. So we'll kind of switch the roles. You'll be, you know, really, really heavy focus on legs, get them hopefully like with a year of progress in 12 weeks. And then, you know, and then we do the same thing in the upper body when you're ready, you know? So um, that's when you really see that, like that, that warrior spirit. Cause you have two different types. You have people who are just not going to work out. Right. And use it as like, Oh, I can't work out. Cause I hurt my knee. Like your whole upper body is fine. Sit in machines. <laughs> like you're gonna be fine. Maybe you're not doing like standing cable exercises or anything, but you could sit in machines and do that. And so uh, these, that's where you see your like troopers, right? I, right. I love, I love that part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the people that aren't letting an, an excuse uh, get to them because we all have excuses. Like you said, there's 20 reasons why I I didn't have to work out today, and I could find 20 excuses why I should skip, but I didn't take one of them. So, you know, you can uh, make excuses or find solutions. And the people at the top, the people who are successful, aren't sitting there making a whole bunch of excuses. They're finding solutions. They're working around it because everyone has their things. Everyone has some inconvenience in their life, some setback, some hurdle. It's the ones that push through and find a way to make it work are the ones that are succeeding because, you know, everyone has excuses excuses everyone yeah. yeah and it's funny i had that the other day i had that actually happen um, to me where i hurt my wrist i don't know if you were there when i hurt my wrist i was boxing hurt my wrist and i was like man i don't want to not box it but you have like two hands right that's yeah. it so i was like i told nader he's a boxing coach here i was like dude uh I think this whole week I just have to work on my left. And so he came up with all these things. And so the whole week, but it was so fun is that my, my jab and my hook like dramatically improved that week mm-hmm. because all I did was focus only on the left. So it was right. like, it was cool. My, and then that, and that was fine. So it was like, that's a, a, a standard solution. You can co- reach out to your coach, be like, Hey, this is my injury. This is what happened. And so it's just funny. Cause in all sports you can do, I guess in all sports besides like running, would be the hard, but you can still do upper body like training and running. I guess keep your endurance up, but that would be the only one where if, like you ankle, you had like an ankle injury. You oh, we always had to do uh, water workouts if somebody was injured. Oh something. yeah, yeah. Well, there there's you go. other things you can do. Okay, well look at that. Even Isolated that. Blade is, Blade is like she's like, yep, that's what he's. So, so I'm not a I'm not an expert running coach. Oh. I just learned something. There's always ways around <laughs> things, you know. Yeah. There's always ways around. So, um, with that guys, I think this one is a good one. So if you guys have questions in the comment, like leave the questions in the comments one, I think this would be a good, a good one that might have some questions with it. Maybe we can go into a, answer some of them on like another podcast or, or maybe it can turn into a, a comment section with Adam. Yeah. I like these. Those are fun. Yeah. Those are a fun thing for me. Yeah. They're for, you know, what's funny is, uh, I was talking over the weekend to, uh, Denitra about that stuff. Like she's like, why do you like doing the content whatever? And I was like, well, 
it it makes me it forces me to study and it forces me to if I do the if I do the reviews on the bikini and I do the 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 co comment section, the comment section forces me to get better in research just in case of something I don't know or forgot or need freshing up on. And then the the shows, even though it's a lot of work to do this, because it's a lot of work to like look at their show history, all these things, um, it keeps me super accurate of what's happening right now, what's winning right now. And so it's like gives you like so it's a it's a mutual benefit. I have to do it because I'm known to do it now, so it kind of forces me to do it. But two, it's like it forces me to stay on top of it and learn too. And you mm -hmm. learn more things. You're always learning more things, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. So I like it. I enjoy it. Yeah. And, and the camera loves you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was. You You're know made funny? for the screen. You know what's funny is uh, <laughs> I've gotten very comfortable in front of the camera right now. But before Ashley, I was okay. I was okay on camera. Uh, I was doing. I was doing my own content and stuff for, I'm on deck. I'm on uh, YouTube for a decade, a little over a decade now. Wow. Yeah. It's just funny, but uh, I'll look back at those videos and they're so, they're so bad, but I was, but when I started working with you, you were so good on camera cause you were already like doing all your YouTube, all your stuff. Like you were already really camera, I guess, experienced. I was like, man, I better step up like right now <laughs> because, because I can't have all these when Ashley's doing good. I can't have all these outtakes where I'm the weak link, you know, I'm not going to be the weak link here. So I, it, it took me a, a, a few, but I stepped up real fast, but it, it kind of forced me to be better. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's good. Iron sharpens iron, you know, you iron go. sharpens iron. That's the, that's the thing. So if you want to be around, that's another thing. If you want to be how you're talking about, you're always being in Ohio and getting around um, people who uh, keep it like more motivating for you and finding ways to be more motivated. I do believe that iron sharpens iron and, um, with that being said, we have opposing class Saturday, May 6th. Look at that segue. That's a oh, professional that segue. <laughs> so if you guys want to come down Saturday, May 6th, uh, we have a posing seminar at 10 o'clock, followed by a glute camp at 1130, where I will be one of the coaches there. Ooh. I think I'm going to start jumping in on those more often. Those yeah. are I had so much fun Saturday, like training people on in that. So I'll be there. It's free for any Team Elite Physique athlete, and it's 25 if you're not a Team Elite Physique athlete. For the glute camp. For the glute camp. Posing's free for everyone, no matter where you're from. We had uh, people come from other people's teams last week that are pros even. It's, it's, a, it's a neutral territory. You guys are all welcome. So um, we would love to have you here. But I do think that's a scenario where you're talking about like Ohio or, or girls who, somewhere who's there's no one at her gym, like going to seminars. That's a fun one. We're going to make them more fun soon. I'm building a barbecue area. We're going to do like a barbecue. We're going to do a booties posing and barbecue. I don't know. Somehow I'm going to make the posing a B. <laughs> and and uh, we're going to do like a whole day once a month here eventually, but I'm building it out at the other house. So it's going to take a few months to get that up and running. But um, yeah, it'll be a fun, a fun little trip where more people can justify the trip, you know, coming out here. Bikinis, booties, and barbecue. Oh, look at you, Ashley. Yeah. See? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be coming up soon. They're remodeling the house. We just submitted paperwork to the city. Um, and yeah, it'll be, it'll be a fun thing to, to do. So Anyway, with that, guys, I had fun with this one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be here next week, same time, same place. Probably same shirts. All right. <laughs> See you later. Probably not going to shower. Just wear it all week. <laughs>